So one of the limitations that we looked at in the previous demo is the limitation that you have to explicitly apply all the modifiers to a creature. Why is it not possible to simply track the presence of an object in the system and apply the modifier only while the modifier is actually there. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to build a combination demo where we're going to couple several patterns together and we're going to take a look at uh, not just the chain of responsibility but we're also going to use the observer pattern and there's going to be a mediator as well and even uh, to some degree uh, there's going to be a uh, memento as well because I'm going to be returning tokens which are effectively mementos. I'll try to simplify that part but the rest of it is going to be fairly sophisticated. So let's begin by implementing some sort of an event class. Now this is a large demo I have to warn you so we're going to go through this slowly. So first of all what I want to do is I want to be able to generate events and this is the observer pattern. If you're not familiar with the observer you might want to actually jump ahead because unfortunately the observer comes after this pattern. So here is the ID. I'm going to have an event class which is going to notify us on queries. So this is the idea of something called command query separation. So we're going to be processing queries and the query is going to typically ask us to provide an attacker or defense value for a creature just like in the previous lecture. Now what I'm going to have here in the event is I'm going to have an ability to subscribe to an event, to unsubscribe to an event and to also fire the event. So we want to specify who exactly are the consumers of the event. So I'm going to have a private map and that map is going to go from integer to a consumer of t args or just args. Let's have args as the argument here. So we're going to have uh, basically a bunch of subscribers or handlers. I'll call them handlers. So these are going to be Let's just make a hash map here. These are going to be uh, effectively functions which handle whenever a particular event is fired then it's provided a certain number of arguments. Now I know it's it's a little bit confusing at the moment. Let me actually just stick a star in here so that we don't waste any more time. Now in addition to uh, this and we uh, by the way yes we that was a bit uh, rushed because it's Javito function consumer. In addition to this what we want is we want some sort of index uh, that we can increment and use that as a key into the map to find an appropriate consumer. So now what we can do is we can make some sort of method for subscribing to the event public in subscribe uh, consumer args handler and what you can do here is uh, get the index as i and then we say handlers dot put so we add it to the collection index plus plus and handler and return I like so and in addition we're going to have unsubscribe public void unsubscribe uh, by index or key in actual fact just handlers dot remove key and finally we need a way of firing the event we need a way of actually triggering the event and notifying each of the consumers that something happened so public void fire args args and here I'm going to say for consumer args handler in handlers.values. What we're going to do is we're going to say handler.accept args. So this is how you can fire the event on every single consumer. Now you're probably wondering, well, hold on. If we're just talking about modifying a creature, why do we have consumers? And the reason is that we want to layer the query operation for a creature's attack or defense into an event that gets handled by whatever modifier actually wants to apply itself to a creature. So now we're going to build a query class. So remember we're going with this idea of command query separation. We're going to have a query and this class is going to specify what creatures attribute you're querying. So first of all we have to specify the creature creature name. We have to specify what kind of attribute we're interested in. So enum argument and I will add obvious ones, attack and defense. Defense like so and we're going to have public argument, argument like so. And we're also going to have the result, public int result. So result is the value that the handlers can actually modify to their heart's content and the final result will be given to the consumer. So let's make a constructor. Uh, so I'll just initialize everything in the constructor here. I'm going to uh, make it like this and that's pretty much it for the query. So now the question is well what else do we need? We obviously need the creature and we need to 
query the creature statistics. But what I want to do is I want to make a mediator and that mediator is going to be called a game. So we have all of the creatures participating in some side of game. And in terms of the game, the reason why we're making the mediator is we want to make a central location with where the query event is actually kept. So we're going to have public event query called queries equals new event like so. So the idea behind this is that we now have a central location where any modifier can subscribe itself to queries on the creature and modify the creature's attack or defense value. So now let's build a creature itself. So we're going to have a class called creature. Now the creature is obviously going to have a reference to the game it's in game game but in addition we'll have some public members will have the name of the creature and we'll have uh, the base attack and base defense values so these are the base values which are modified by the creature modifier so let's actually make a constructor which initializes all of this goodness so here we specify the game that we're playing in we specify the name of the creature and the base attack and defense values and then of course what we want is we want the getters and the setters for attack and defense well, I'm not going to do the setters because the setters don't make much sense. We have base values, and if you want to set base values, those are very easy to do, but we're going to build the getters. So we're going to have get attack. So the attack value is obviously the base value plus each modifier, which also has a reference to the event, is able to actually modify that value. So what we do is we build a query. We build a query for a creature called name. The argument is attack for uh, this uh, particular demo so since we're getting the attack it's attack the base value is base attack that's the value that gets modified and I'm going to call this Q so this is the query and we're going to say game dot queries dot fire Q so we fire the event and we let any modifier which is subscribed to the event actually handle it and modify the query result and then we return that result and that's the attack value and let's actually do the same for defense so here I'm going to just copy get attack and paste it as get defense defense and the difference here is that this becomes uh, defense and of course instead of base attack we use base defense but apart from that everything is the same pretty much so now let's add a two string implementation so that we get to actually print what's inside uh, the object of course we cannot use base attack and base defense that's not very interesting I'm more interested in just ordinary attack and ordinary defense and here we're going to print the result of those getters so here I'll call get attack and here I'll call get defense all right, and finally, uh, we need to build the modifiers. So the modifiers also reference our event broker, which in our case is the game. So we're going to have a uh, base class first of all. We have a class called creature modifier so that we get to specify what exactly a modifier should reference. So a modifier should reference the game, and a modifier should reference uh, the creature as well. Let's make a constructor so that we enforce its use in the derived classes. And then coming down here, what we can do is we can actually build, uh, let's say we want to build a double attack modifier. So we say class double attack modifier, which extends creature modifier. Let's actually stick it in here. We're going to have something else later on. So we need the constructor. We need to call the base constructor. Uh, so here is the actual call but in addition what we want to do is we want to take the mediator which in our case is game and we want to subscribe to any queries that query the attack value because we need to double that value for this particular creature so here's what we do we say game.queries.subscribe subscribe and we say here is the query and here is the handler so I specify the handler as a lambda because remember it takes a supplier so what I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm querying the right creature so I need to make sure that q dot creature name is equal to uh, the actual creature dot name the one that we're querying the one that we're interested in and I need to make sure that we're querying the attack value not the defense value so q dot argument has to be equal to attack and not defense and if those conditions hold then I can double the attack value which is what the double attack modifier is meant to do so q dot result is multiplied by 2 there we go so this is the implementation now what I can also do is I can save the token here so I can say token equals and we can just make it a field 
up here. So a private final in token. And the reason I'm doing this is so that when the double modifier, the double attack modifier gets uh, closed somehow, we can actually get rid of uh, the subscription there by no longer subscribing to those events because, uh, well, because we're no longer interested in. So in order to do this, I'm going to implement the auto closable interface. And this requires that I implement the close uh, method. Now here's the interesting part. The uh, close method by default specifies that it throws exception, but I think we can just comment it out and ignore it. And as a result, we don't have to uh, propagate any additional exception specifications when we come to actually use the close method. So here the idea is that we say game.queries.unsubscribe with the token that we've saved. That's pretty much it. So now we unsubscribe from handling any kind of uh, changes to the underlying creature. Okay, so this is our uh, object. Let's build another modifier, by the way. Let's build a, some kind of increased defense modifier. So a very similar idea, class increase defense modifier. Uh, it, I'm just going to extend uh, creature modifier. I'm not going to implement auto closable, so let's just do this. And here the idea is pretty much the same. The idea is just like what we have here, except that instead of handling the query for the attack, it has to be the defense. And then we can, for example, increase the result by three like so. So this is our increased defense modifier. Now we can put all of this together and actually look at how the event broker can be used. So first of all, the event broker get, gets constructed. So in our case, it's called game. And then what we do is we make a creature. So I'm gonna make a creature. Uh, let's call, well, first of all, you have to pass in the game that the creature is in. Let's call the creature Strong Goblin. And let's have a 2-2 creature. So I'm gonna make a variable, let's call it Goblin. And uh, there we go. So let's right line the goblin first of all. Let's just see what the baseline goblin is. Now we can pile on the modifiers in any order that we wish. So for example, if I want an increased defense modifier, I can just do it like this, increase defense modifier, game comma goblin. And that's it. As soon as I have constructed this object, the uh, modifier has been uh, automatically applied because whenever you query for get attack or get defense, you're going to get that modifier taking part because it's subscribed to the events inside the event broker. Now, what we can also do is we can use the try with resources approach to the double attack modifier because remember it implements auto closable. So I can say try new double attack modifier. Uh, game comma goblin dot var and let's make it uh, uh, d a uh, m double attack modifier so I can just do it like this and I can right line the goblin here and uh, I can also right line the goblin after it's been closed so that we get to see that the modifier doesn't apply anymore so with this kind of approach we can actually run the application and see what we actually get all right, and as you can see, we're getting the correct result. So the creature starts out as a 2-2. Two, two. We double the attack, so the attack is 4, and we increase the defense, so the defense is 5. But this is inside the try with resources. As soon as we exit, the double attack modifier gets cleaned up, we unsubscribe from the handler, and as a result, the attack goes back to 2. So this has been an illustration of how to build an event broker, and thereby, once again, we implemented this idea of a chain of responsibility because we process the chain of increased defense modifier and double attack modifier, but with the event broker, we've acquired extra flexibility because now objects can go in and out of the system and uh, they don't have to have direct references to one another like we did with the method chains. And uh, that's, uh, that's the benefit of using the mediator design pattern, which in this case is represented by the event broker called game that we've constructed.